Oh, yes, it happened. Our boy finally got his moment, and oh my god, it's a glorious one. Hydroid has been in desperate need of a rework, and Pablo has delivered. No more useless squishy pirate boy and enter the new era of people enjoying tentacles, because, well, no one enjoyed tentacles before, right, guys? Right? Hello? As always, timestamps are added beneath the video. Hydroid's new passive. Enemies damaged by Hydroid are marked and become more vulnerable to corrosive status, initiating by cutting their armor in half instead of the quarter like usual. Now, this is a great addition when you go over the rest of the kit and this completely outranks what you had with just the passive slamming tendril. So we're off to a good start. Hydroid's first ability is Tempest Barrage. So the main changes to this ability is that you no longer need to hold and charge Tempest anymore to receive maximum benefit benefits. On top of that, the old augment used to provide Barrage with corrosive damage. However, now Tempest Barrage innately has changed from impact and magnetic damage and will now deal corrosive damage and status procs instead. Also, the augment will now also go to provide viral damage and status procs instead. So this change has made this Tempest Barrage such a dominant ability. If you go ahead and just spam his first with the augment in his build, it will hard control zones with armor strip, viral debuff, bus and stagger to enemies here. This makes him one of the ultimate threats to the Grenier faction. Hydra's second ability is Tidal Surge. So Tidal Surge went under some quality of life changes. When cast, you will remove any status debuffs applied to Hydroids. Enemies will get scooped up and collected inside the wave when going through them, and you can recast the ability to help change directional control while still remaining in the invulnerable iframe state. So that being said, I do want to put more emphasis on the augment here, which makes the ability go from, yeah, this is pretty good to, oh god, no, this is very good. Tidal Impunity now provides a base additional 12 seconds of status immunity, meaning that you won't even have to pop in a prime sure food onto your build whilst also reducing the cost of this ability from a base 50 energy to just 15 energy per cast. So in terms of speaking defensively, this augment and ability is great to help his survival whenever you're on the move. Hydro's new third ability is called Plunder. So gone are the days of lurking underwater, collected enemies and puddles, and instead we enter this new age of protection with armor and damage increases with this new ability. So use your Plunder ability on enemies to give yourself armor, which does have a max cap, but that can scale with strength and the armor will have a timer that ticks down encouraging you to recast the ability and remain active to keep your defensives up to benefit more from this ability try to cast it with groups of enemies being alive first plunder also gives you a damage increase to your corrosive abilities but furthermore this gives you a guaranteed corrosive to your weapons so modding your weapons for viral will pair really well with this ability two birds one stone so for the new augment this is called ruse and plunder this will increase Increase the amount of corrosive damage that you have by an extra 50%, which is actually really nice. But also, when this augment is applied, Cast and Plunder will now heal you and your allies for 50 health per enemy here. This makes for great sustainability and survival to a health and armor related build. And finally, we got Hydroid's fourth ability, Tentacle Swarm. Now, there isn't a lot of change here, but they did address the most important part. The Kraken, when holding an enemy, used to fling them and smash them into the ground. It's made it extremely frustrating to help the ability because you'd have to be an eSport pro gamer to actually land a shot. Well, now the tentacles will just hold enemies in place, allowing our synergy to pick them off with weapons. The augment also remains exactly the same. So this kit brings us a Warframe that targets the Grenier faction with absolute ferocity, plenty of armor debuffing and stripping. And don't get me wrong, it's still good against the other factions. You can follow up with with viral from either augments or weaponry and roman survivability with a combination of tidal impunity or even just plunder armor status cleansing damage increasing quality of life the list goes on it's looking good hydroid is was and will most unlikely always be a zone related warframe so finding choke points and digging your foxhole to set up will always be the better way to play him due to how his kit works a warframe built for survival and endurance missions so then what about some builds Alrighty, so i'm going to go ahead and cover two that i personally enjoyed using but they both boil down to a similar style of play up first, we have the zone builds. Now, this is focused around his first and his fourth abilities combined to deny enemies with choke points and missions. Find yourself a small room and watch them fail attempt after attempt to try and reach you. 
what was nice here was bringing in some energy related subsumption to help ability rotations and spam so i went with fractured blast subsumed from citrine this also allowed me to do some roaming a little bit outside of the zone if i wanted to combined with spamming from his first and third abilities i could really hold my ground wherever i wanted strength was the most important key as pretty much all of the abilities here you kind of want strength for when it comes to hydroid mostly his second and his fourth really don't need much strength from there duration felt great to follow up with allowing his third and fourth abilities to last longer so i didn't need to tend to them as often in my ability rotation i would find an area to lock down and use his tentacles to stop enemies swarming in i would then cast my third ability for protection as early as i can whilst also receiving a cheeky damage boost from there fractured blaster or abilities like nourish would actually help for your survival i liked pairing fractured with arcane blessing to increase my overall health pool by picking up health orbs whenever enemies die and then finally we can go and top it all off with his first ability to go and help the debuffing on enemy armor and that viral to debuff the enemy health to the point where tempest barrage will basically end up killing whatever tries to reach you as for the second build i went with what i thought was the more obvious one to go and implement subsuming in wisps breach surge ability and pairing it with hydra his first tempish barrage ability with the augment just meant for a wombo combo that enemies physically don't last against once you go ahead and combine those two abilities with hydroid's tidal surge you can go and scoop up enemies place yourself a little to no danger due to the iframes you leave the wave cast your blind from wisp breach surge and then absolutely delete enemies from millions of damage with his first ability so for that again guys strength deemed more important here as there was almost no downside to concentrate your build for it so from here onwards, I feel like it's a bit more situational on how you do this build, depending on said user. For me, I actually liked range to complement this build a bit more. Then I would follow it up with efficiency to help the amount of energy that I'll go ahead and use. Keep in mind, you're going to be killing enemies an awful lot with this build. So hopefully you won't run into many energy issues. But if you do, just go and apply yourself with the Xenuric Focus School. This build is all about grouping and killing with little effort and definitely one that I recommend trying out if you haven't already. Try to use this build in long, narrow areas like long corridors as it's complementary to what you're doing. Overall, my thoughts on this rework are nothing but positive. I will admit, I don't always like zone-controlled builds. Sometimes I prefer to nuke and roam, but from what Hydroid used to be to where he is today, wow, what a glow up. So then, this only leaves me with one question unanswered. Which Warframe gets their rework next? And who do you guys think it will be? As always, guys, I'm going to try and keep these videos short, sweet, and to the point. I am happy for Hydroid and excited to see what else the dev team can cook up further down the line, especially for other reworks. Maybe Iterus? But as always, guys, until the next video, I'll be seeing you guys again soon.